The season 8 premiere brought an end to a two-year drought that has been tormenting fans since 2017. From family reunions to secrets being uncovered, the first episode was loaded with epic moments that Game of Thrones followers were just dying to see. Much as fans were glued to their screens, they still couldn't wait to share their excitement with the rest of the world. Order your man to step aside or there will be violence. I choose violence. The story of nine noble families that fight for control over the mythical lands of Westeros is one that has literally taken the TV series world by storm, popular from the moment the show premiered in 2011. It's the coming storm. Based on George R. R. Martin's fantasy novels A Song of Ice and Fire, the series created some of the biggest moments in TV history, with its show-stopping battle sequences and magical creatures. But now, as the end draws nigh, not only fans will be missing the show, but so will the stars. Some of the fondest memories I have are of all of us kind of snuggled up in like our, our warm cloaks, trying to get warm in like these tiny little easy ups and it's raining outside and it's muddy and it's freezing and just like that camaraderie that we built from just being so like cold and so wet was just like, they were, they were the most exciting times because it was how we really bonded as a cast. That's what I miss. It's magnificent storytelling, the whole show. I've had the joy, the privilege to speak some of the best words I've ever had to say in my life as an actor. And I will love the show, love the character forever, and, and it, it, it may end up on my tombstone, Game of Thrones. This chapter of the fantasy drama might be ending, but it won't be the last we see of Westeros. More will be coming from its creators, as they're moving ahead with a prequel that will go back thousands of years before the adventures of Game of Thrones to a time and place of more secrets. That's right, the hit fantasy show is back. It's watched by millions of fans every week and it's earned itself 47 Emmy Awards. Here to discuss the final season of the show with me is Inku Kang, a staff writer at Slate. Inku, welcome to the show. The first episode uh, aired last night. Did you watch it? Of course I watched it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I haven't seen it yet, so don't give away any spoilers. I'm a massive fan. What did you make of it? I think Game of Thrones uh, Game of Thrones season premieres tend to be not the most exciting episodes of any season. And so it was okay. I think because the show has been gone for so long, you know, it's been over, it's been almost a year and a half since we last saw all of these people that we love. Um, the show was sort of able to bank on us just kind of being really excited. And it set up a lot of pieces for uh, how the various, how the rest of the season is going to go. So not the most exciting, but it was really great seeing all of these characters anyway. Game of Thrones is probably one of the only shows left that get these kind of ceremonial communal viewings where friends pile into the living room and watch it together. Why is that, that it's, it's the only show sort of left like that? I think it's a really great show to talk about, um, especially with your friends, because there's so many different moving pieces. And so everyone really wants to talk about like the part of the show that they're really excited about. Also, as you sort of implied, um, it's a show that is really shocking. And if you don't watch it right away, someone on the internet is going to ruin the show for you <laughs> or it's going to ruin plot points for you. So I think it makes sense. I think I watched the premiere last night and then I went on Twitter and there were so many people making so many funny jokes about what happened. And if you didn't see what happened, you can't partake in the larger conversation. Now, one of the big spoilers is always who's been killed off. The show takes a lot of risks, it kills off a lot of main characters, and it kind of made its reputation on these OMG moments. And do you think we can expect more of that this season? I mean, how could we not, right? <laughs> <laughs> I think that the show really loves pulling one on the audience, and I think a lot of the appeal of the show is the writers trying to pull one on the audience and the audience trying to outsmart the writers by trying to guess what's going to happen. I'm really excited to see a bunch of my favorite characters die. I think that's sort of why we watch the show. We want to fall in love with them and then we want to cry when 
they're killed off in some horribly gruesome manner. There's a lot of loose ends to be tied up this season. Do you think we're going to get that conclusion or do you think there's going to be a sort of it was all a dream, use your imagination, take what you want from it kind of ending to season eight? I mean, I think we really have to admit that whatever faults Game of Thrones has, George R. R. Martin and the two executive producers have really created an amazingly intricate world. And, you know, you have all of these religions, you have like 20 million characters that you sort of kind of care about. And I think it's almost impossible to imagine that they wouldn't want Great game. Uh, the audience to get some sort of like emotional satisfaction from all of this hard work that they've put in. I believe in them for the most part. I think we're going to have a good ending. I don't know if everyone will be satisfied, but you can't really satisfy, you know, tens of millions of people. And, and as you were saying there, we've seen a lot more of Sansa and Daenerys, sort of strong female characters in the show. There wasn't a lot of that at the beginning. Do you think that Game of Thrones season eight is uh, going to give us a sort of feminist ending by any chance? I think that we will see. I never want to ascribe too much uh, feminism to the show. I think that a lot of people are really happy with a lot of the ways the female characters went. And then I saw their season premiere and then we got like our usual load of like HBO gratuitous body parts. And so, I mean, we'll see. I think that the show is definitely aware is that it wants its female characters to do, to be more than the victims. But I also don't know how much this world will allow for them to be more than victims. So we'll see. Obvious exception here is Arya. <laughs> My final question to you is who do you think is going to be on the Iron Throne at the end of season eight? Uh, wow. <laughs> I still think it's going to be Daenerys, um, even though I think her worst qualities are coming out more and more as she's held on to power longer. That's sort of the essence of the show, that there is no way to hold on to power and be a good person, really. But maybe she'll figure out a way to do that in a way that no one else has. Inky, thank you so much for geeking out about Game of Thrones with me today on Showcase. Thank you. It was a pleasure being here.